All right. Uh, 7.3 energy dissipation. Let's just read this little box here. The part of the converted kinetic energy that does not reappear after an inelastic collision is said to be dissipated. In other words, irreversibly converted. Okay, what are we talking about here? Well, if you recall in the previous one, 7.2, we looked at potential energy and um, we saw that uh, let's see if I can try to explain this again. If So now you had a ball and a wall, and the ball impacted the wall. Okay, We know that the ball squashed. There's a little bit of a, a squashing, a deformation, for example. And if, And we know that at a certain point, the velocity, the relative velocity between the two was zero, so the kinetic energy dropped during this point. And some of the kinetic energy was converted, if we recall, into potential energy. Right? Potential energy, which is a part of the internal energy. Right? Okay. However, in an elastic collision, an elastic collision, all of that potential energy can be reversed and the energy that's stored as potential energy can be regained and this uh, ball will then um, re reverse its deformation and then begin to have kinetic energy again. Okay, So that's an, in an elastic collision. However, in an inelastic collision, some of that kinetic energy is converted into potential energy, but other um, another component or aspect or part of that kinetic energy is dissipated. Okay, in a sense, another I guess another idea is it's lost. You can't regain that energy. It is in a it's in an irreversible. You can't you can't uh, use that energy again. So, and this is in an inelastic collision. So what we want to do is we want to now consider um, this idea of why is this energy dissipated. Okay, so the way that we'll try to describe this is by using these terms coherent and incoherent. Okay, coherent simply means that the atoms, the atoms are say orderly the atoms are facing the same direction. Okay, this is just a quick, a quick overview of this, and then we'll get into some examples. Incoherent means that the atoms are random. Okay, so there's a randomness with incoherence, and there's a there's a order there's an order with coherence. There's the same direction. Okay, so now I want to further break up. Um, as we've seen, let me just go on the side here, as we've seen, energy, you can either look at energy in terms of motion, okay, the energy due to motion, or the energy due to configuration. Okay, what do you mean by this? Well, if you've got an object that's moving, then it's got a certain energy due to its motion, whereas if you've got an object that's been squished, it's changed its shape, right? This is to do with its shape. This is to do with deformation, right? Um, if, if you've got energy due to this, then it could be possibly like potential energy, something like that. Okay, so you've got these two types of energies, which we, we did see in the previous one. If, if you've got coherent energy due to motion, and what this means is, you've got, say, an object, as we discussed there, if you look at the atoms inside an object that's moving in a coherent way, then all those atoms, each one of those atoms, is moving in an orderly way in the same direction. That is your kinetic energy. That's kinetic energy. That is energy due to motion, kinetic energy, it's coherent, 
the, the atoms are moving in the same direction. Then, if you want to look at coherent energy in terms of configuration, so now you take this object, right, and you squish it, you squish it down. And all these atoms, they move in an orderly fashion. They get squished like this, okay? So they've been deformed, they've been deformed in an orderly way. They've been deformed in a coherent way. That means that when you let go of that squishing, if you, if you stop squishing it, then it can restore. It can be restored to its original shape. That is potential energy. Okay? However, if you're looking at incoherent, meaning the atoms are moving randomly, let's consider, again, um, incoherent uh, motion. So that's if you take a ball, for example, right, there are all the atoms, maybe they're, and so they're moving in a, they're moving in a coherent way initially, then they hit the floor, and it, it deforms a bit, and what happens to these coherent atoms that were, they were in an orderly fashion, they were facing the same direction, when it hits the ground, all of a the sudden these atoms don't move in the same direction anymore. They all start to move in random directions, okay? They move in random directions. And so after the impact, these, these atoms are now moving in an incoherent fashion, okay? So that's to do with, with motion. Then you've also got to incoherent um, energy to do with the configuration or the deformation, okay? So you've also got that to do with configuration or deformation. And that is simply that if you take an object and you squish it, just like we did over here, but instead of the, ob the atoms um, moving in the same direction or uh, deforming in an orderly fashion, these atoms now deform in a disorderly fashion. Okay? I hope that's making sense. So that if you now let go of this object that you were deforming, squishing, these atoms are now in each other's way. So they can't move back. They can't restore, be restored to their original position. So this is incoherent deformation. This is incoherent motion of the atoms. Okay? So look at it this way. Coherent energy, incoherent energy, um, energy in terms of motion and, and, and configuration, energy in terms of motion and configuration. Okay, so now let's look at this diagram. Let's look over here. So this is exactly what I was saying. You've got coherent uh, energy and you've got incoherent energy. You've got energy of motion and you've got energy of configuration, okay? So this is if an object is moving, all the, say you throw a ball in the air, all the atoms are moving in the same direction, that is coherent, okay? Whereas if you throw the ball against the wall, all those atoms begin to now move in a random disorderly fashion, that's incoherent energy, okay? You can't get this energy back. Okay, then you've got energy of configuration, which means you squash an object, you change its shape, you deform it. If those atoms are deformed in an orderly way, that's potential energy, you can get that energy back. Whereas if energy is, uh, sorry, if the object is deformed such that the atoms are disorderly and random and, they, and they're now in each other's way, you can't get that, it can't be restored to its original shape. So this is energy dissipation. These are, this is the reason for energy being dissipated. You can't regain that energy. But all of this is internal energy. Internal energy is potential energy plus your incoherent 
energy. Okay, so internal energy is your potential energy plus these two, right? The your incoherent. So some of your internal energy you can regain, and other other component of your internal energy is irreversible. You've lost that. Okay, see you in the next one.